Hey everyone, uh, I'm gonna be breaking down my Halo frigate. I know that this one was pretty highly requested. A lot of people were interested in seeing how I made the ship. So I want to go ahead and help you by breaking down this ship. So you can go ahead and see how I ended up making the build. So I was mainly going for as close to a recreation as possible. I've been seeing a lot of Halo frigates on the sub recently, so it's been really cool. A lot of them are inspired by, and they've been creating very unique designs, which I absolutely love. Um, this one was mainly trying to go for a direct recreation, hence the the nose here being rather thin. So this is like the main part that was giving a lot of people trouble was the nose of the frigate. So there are a few mods that you are at, going to need for this particular build in order to get it to look like this. Uh, one of the few major mods are going to be better ship snaps and better part flips. Just so you can get things like this, the flipped hopes at cap and these flips demo spines, for example. You're gonna need the better snaps for creating the nose. That way the demos pieces can actually snap together. You will need Matilda's just because of parts like this. They're not really necessary for like the weaponry. You could always just use different parts, but I did use them for some of the weaponry here just to give it a little bit more, I guess, slower accuracy for lack of a better term. And, you know, other Griebling will be included as such as the Avon Tech dish and these Avon Tech wings. And lastly, that is pretty much it that you're going to need for mods so the biggest issue is going to be up here in the front so let's go ahead and start by breaking this first part down really quick just so we can see what's going on here Move this out of the way let's just go ahead and put this back really quick All right, so this is the part that was giving a lot of people trouble. So I wanted to go ahead and break down this part really quick because the rest of this is actually fairly easy to replicate. It's it's not too much going on here. It's it's all relatively out in the open. So this isn't as difficult to recreate as the front part. So one of the things that makes this entire build work is the nose. And the nose is connected back here let me go ahead and move this Matilda's piece out of the way. It's going to be connected back here in this little section right here. So what's going on really is this. There is a structure going on here, which is just some demo spines that are flipped inward and a demo spine that is going to be placed down here as well. What is connecting all these pieces together is going to be the weapon point attachment uh, technique, you know, where you connect a bunch of pieces using the weapon attachment points. So let me go ahead and just get rid of this really quick so we can kind of see what's generally going on here. Move this out of the way as well. This was just there for Griebling. It's not really necessary. But if we move these two pieces out of the way, we can go ahead and see what's actually really going on. So what's happening here is this. Um, I did decide to use the direct fire battleship mainly because it did have a very slow fire rate and a very high hull damage. But what's going on, let me go ahead and move this out of the way as well. So as you can see, they are connected using a snap point right there in the middle. If I were to grab this and move it out of the way, it's connecting that attachment point down to that demo spine, as well as this attachment point right there. It is connecting all three. So as you can see, if I were to grab this piece, it also pulls the gun. If I were to grab this piece, it also pulls the gun because it's connected. And even if I grab this bottom piece, it is also connected there as well. 
So that's how all of these parts are snapped together. And then, of course, we have the Deimos Wing B connecting off to the side here, which is creating this little section. And then same for the other side, you know, the, the part that was deleted. Now, the way that this is all being connected as well is going to be because of these two pieces right here. And these two pieces are actually connecting to the end of this Deimos wing here. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. It's all connecting here. So these two pieces are snapping by... Let me go ahead and grab this piece so we can see what's going on here. So that connection point right there that you're seeing is connecting to the end of that connection point right there. Let me go ahead and put it here as you can see. So that's the way that this connects to these two pieces and that's going to be connecting to this little side section here and then again it's connected to this piece which then connects to the demo spine. They're just all smashed together and connected using this Matilja's direct fire battleship. And I wanted a direct fire, uh, direct fire platform for Matilja, so that way you can go ahead and shoot um, on the pole of the trigger or like the bumper, as opposed to like a you know something like this, which are just the turrets. They'll shoot on their own, and that was like the main premise for this entire build was this this particular gun there. You could swap it out for other things. As a matter of fact, even if you don't want to use Matilda's, uh, the Matilda's weapons, one really good alternative is actually going down to the C-Class weapons and using the Mark IV, oh, sorry, the Mark IX Gauss gun. And if you just stack three of these in the same spot, you would get generally around the same uh, damage as this thing. And then you could even lower the fire rate by reducing the amount of pips inside of the actual weapon system. So it feels a little bit more closer to the frigate itself. But again, just so you can all see, the demo spine that you're seeing here is connecting to all of this going on up in the front. And this spine is connecting... This wing is going to connect to this demo spine A, which is just flipped off to the side. And all these pieces, these three demo spines, are all connected together using this Matilda's Aerospace Direct Fire Battleship gun. And that's all connecting using that weapon point uh, snap glitch. And in case you all want to see how it works in action, let me go ahead and give you an example. So if we were to snap this weapon right there, you can see it works like that. If I were to take this item and flip it and get it generally close to the same snap point, let's go ahead and move it slightly closer. And now you can see it's connected. It'll count it as connected because it's now sharing the same attachment point as opposed to, let's say, right here, which Clearly, it's choosing not to because that connection point that is making up the demo spine right there is not connect is not touching or close enough to the weapon platform in order to cause the game to register it as connected. It's a cheeky little glitch that you can use, and as a matter of fact, it was the way that a lot of people were doing the fractional glitching, where they were. Um, moving parts in little fractional steps before the introduction of you know a lot of the mods that we currently have today especially on xbox since we didn't have access to the mods we were instead resorting to using this as a workaround the entire time but beyond that it's just a assembly of demo spines the spines used in this particular front is a mixture of Deimos Spine F, the Deimos Spine C, Deimos Spine G, the Deimos Spine E, A, 
and B. Those are all the ones that were used in the makeup for the nose. And here, when we were connecting all the pieces, I was able to connect it into a main point. Let me see if I can bring up the area. Where is this section? Ah, yes, here it is. So this last piece here, the demo spine A, is actually how everything connected to the main part of the body. Let me go ahead and bring back the let me just go ahead and re-break it apart. Okay. So the demo spine A right there. Oops, let me get this Avon tech piece out of the way really quick. So this this piece right here, the demo spine A, is actually how it connects to the main body. That little attachment point that you're seeing kind of glitched in right there, it's going to be appearing right there in the middle. That piece is snapping to the front of that part right there. That is how I managed to get that to snap into a central point like this in order to get it aligned the way that you see here. And that's how this part is connected, the Deimos cowling. That is how the uh, Demos belly down there is connected. That is how, um, where is it? I believe that's it actually. And then the Avon Tech uh, glow part, that was just so I can get this piece to snap, just so it can kind of look like a, you know, like a faux barrel. Now, if you want to get it a, a lot closer to lower accuracy, you would try to get the gun to be up here in the nose. Uh, I that was my mistake so if you want to correct that when you're building it and you could figure out how to throw it up there then that's that would be a lot closer to lower accuracy rather than down there in the bottom but I was just so excited to get the nose correct that I just decided to settle and throw it in there as opposed to complete lower accuracy which is a bit unfortunate because I tried making this as close to the Halo Frigate as I possibly could. But that's how this entire thing was built. Um, I did use the Tayo pieces here. They are non-functional, so there's no point to having them other than a structural piece. I needed a um, two section long piece that was not the Avon Tech piece here. Where is it? This one. Because I did consider using this as a part, but it was not flat enough and I did not like this section here. It was like kind of carved out. I wanted something more flat in order to give it more of that, you know, those hard lines that the UNSC ships are known for. But the nose cap D goes into the nose cap C, which goes into the uh, computer core. Those are all connected using these Hope Tech caps that are on the top and on the bottom. I did use these Matilda's uh, flat cannons for the flat cannons that are present on the actual frigate. You can see them on the in-game model. You should be able to see them shooting out rapidly. Um, now, for the rest of the body, let me go ahead and move this out of the way really quick. this out of here so I can move this. Now for the rest of the body, this is the way that the ship is going to be. Did I put that right? Yeah, I did. Okay. So the rest of the body is actually rather simple. Um, a lot of the pieces are actually out in the open for you to see. Um, there is now this part is going to be a couple of the gears glitched together. I believe it should be four. Yeah. So four of these Matilda's aerospace landing gears were used in order to allow the ship to stand 
like on its landing bay essentially i believe you can actually just supplement these for the nova galactic gears there's one that you can switch into multiple parts i'd probably recommend that one just because you could probably end up actually accessing the landing bay using the other gears but i ended up uh, resorting to these because um it was just the one that i found at the time but i would recommend probably switching them over to the nova galactic gears i believe it's the ng4 gear but you could end up switching them to those that way you could probably access the actual door now the landing bay goes up into this companion way the companion way has access to this Matilda's aerospace this avon tech keel which is this piece here was used to kind of hide a lot of the gaps there's nothing actually there goes into the demo's belly and this is just so you can go from here into here climb up all those steps and then get into the main body now what's going on in the main body is this let me move these parts out of the way so you can see what's going on down there so what's going on here is this connects over here into the cargo hall as well as the brig i went and glitched a few of the cargo holds the galean s204 cargo holds just so we can get up to at least 3500 it should have a lot higher but at the time i was only using the supernova engines i believe um well it's the supernova engines and the slayton in uh, aerospace engines it's only two of these and then two of those you could end up using the dark star engines i believe there are some that have like the same model but they're they have a higher thrust that way you can actually add significantly more cargo that way it feels a little bit more lower accurate it wouldn't be 3,000 units you know this ship could probably easily hold somewhere around like 10k probably even higher than that in case you wanted so if you do download dark star I'd highly recommend grabbing that and maybe using those engines instead. Uh, that would probably be a better option. Alternatively, you could also use the... There's a mod for increasing how many engines. I believe it's called more cheaty engines. You could probably end up supplementing the Dark Star with that. Just slapping on these. That way you're only using four pips as you're seeing there. And then you could probably just end up using in the engines, you could probably use the, let me scroll down here, the Avon Tech engines. These can end up pushing up to 84,000 maneuvering thrust, which is really good for the parts used here. As a matter of fact, you could even probably supplement for the highest Poseidon engines. The problem is, is that I didn't have anywhere to put these and, and it into the build that felt right you could probably just slap them here especially with the better snaps you probably just could end up throwing it there but again i was trying to go for lower accuracy and i didn't want to like throw something in there another option is the warp engines which are up here there's a c-class one where is it here they are. You could probably just end up using these and just like hide it right here. That way you can get a significantly higher thrust and you can carry way more cargo using these engines here. Because you could see 30,000 maneuvering thrust as opposed to a, a mere 7,000 maneuvering thrust in this one. You could probably just end up using one of these <laughs> instead and it's going to end up pushing a lot more. So that's another alternative for you in case you wanted to use that. So you could just use these parts for, um, just use two of these supernova engines. Um, you could end up using these as well. I only use them that way it can have a little bit uh, closer look. And then using the Avon warp engines here, like I mentioned, that way you can get way more thrust for the cargo, a much higher cargo. Um, now, the cargo hall just simply goes up through into the engineering bay which then accesses the cargo i'm sorry the computer core and the battle stations just to give it a little bit more lower accuracy just for fun this avon tech docker was used 
um, I was not able to find a decent connection point for any of the the ship in order to make it feel good so I just kind of hit it down at the bottom that way we can go ahead and have access to uh, a docker as we can see here give me a second to go back through all the stuff we brought and that is actually being connected right there at the end of the Tayo engineering bay and that's hidden using this Avon tech hood here and then the back is the cargo hold so that is so you can actually access just so you can see how far look at that it's ridiculous you get a significant range for this I believe there's a few other mods that actually have dockers that have like a significant range as a, I think it's actually Matilda that has it I'm not too sure I'd have to go to the my main base in order to access all the parts but that's the oh no it's the tiger yard uh the tiger shipyard that one is has a few dockers that you can use in place of that but that was the one that i used for this build and again that's uh connected to those pieces now what's going on here uh i'm gonna go ahead and show some of the other parts especially like this engine assembly back here but the way that this thing is connected, these are just snapped down onto the the computer core and then just thrown back that way. The bumpers here, that bottom connection point is connecting to oops, that top connection point. That's how this little section is snapping like that. So that's what's going on right here that's how the pieces are kind of floating the way that they are that's how they're snapping so just so you know how that's snapped together and then these pieces can all just kind of snap together on their own as you can see thanks to the better snaps that's how that's snapped together these parts are connected to the decorative engine and those are connected through this there's a Deimos Hull A, which then snaps over into the supernova engines, I believe. Yeah, that should be connected there. Yeah, because this is just in the way. So yeah, that's how that's um, connecting the supernova engines. It's through the Deimos Hull A, which connects to the, d the computer core. And it connects to this. These right here, these demo spines are connected down to the bottom of this right here. That's where it actually goes. <coughs> Excuse me. And this piece right here, the the flip demo scaling is connecting to this piece right here. That's how that was done. There is also a Matilda's piece here the shell plating this is connected on that snap points using that demos piece right there right here so that snaps to that let's go ahead and put this back here other than that um there are these these spines that end up going through all the way up to the front almost uh only actually just a few because i was trying to save on parts because it actually did hit the module limit and i didn't want it to get that far i wanted it to be just below the module limit the demo skeg is connected to the grav drive these are just flipped demo skegs um smashed together as you can see And then these wings here are just two of the Avon Tech wings, and they're connected onto the points that you can see here at the end of the battle stations and the brig. It's connected at the both points there. There is also these missile launchers that I added. 
they are connecting to the last piece here of the demo spine. That's how those are put in there. And I wanted missiles just because, you know, it's a big old frigate. Might as well add some missiles too. Uh, beyond that, there isn't really much else going on here. All the pieces are all pretty much visible, especially through the the photos that I provided in the feature post for this. Uh, the engineering bay connects to the Matilda's Aerospace 3-way, which climbs all the way up into this companion way, which then connects to the Contiki Bridge. This dish connects to the top of the Contiki Bridge, thanks to the better snaps. These are the Demo Spine A. And that's it. So yeah, this entire nose. I highly recommend starting by creating the nose first by getting it as close as possible to each other. The way that I did that was I started with these demo spines and in order to prevent this from happening let me go ahead and show you that. The, in order to prevent that from happening all I did was I grabbed one of these spines here put it there. I flipped it upside down and put it there. That way, it's not trying to snap to anything, and you can kind of just move it wherever you need to go. This was the hardest part of the entire build, was getting the nose to actually be properly aligned, as you can see. That was the hardest part. It's all properly aligned, and that's all I did. I spent quite a bit of time, um, more time than I'd like to admit, just getting them as close as possible, because I wanted to create the thin nose that these frigates are known for. So it so again, just grab like the demo spine pieces, um, cap off the top and bottom of one of them, just so you can get them as close as possible, and then just trial and error, just getting them as close as you can, letting go, seeing if it's close enough. Um, I basically overlapped them slightly using that little sliver there, and just overlapping like that. You might. Um, whenever you actually confirm the the release by pressing A instead of B, you know, by doing any type of flip um, flip shifting or anything like that, you could just simply just press A, and sometimes it'll actually move into place. I don't know how I got lucky with that. That's actually a perfect example of getting lucky. So if you could do that, then awesome. And then from there, it was just literally just snapping on more pieces um, all the way down as far as I could to create the rest of the build. And then again, reaching all the way back there and then snapping it all together using the uh, the weapon attachment point. Now how I did this was just simply, um, if I were to get rid of these pieces, they're actually still one whole uh, unit apart. So that's how I ended up creating that. I just... Um, use these uh, demo spines. I cloned them all the way down in order to create a solid wall. Deleted a section there. Took these pieces. Oops. Took these pieces. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Sorry. <laughs> and then just snapped them right there. That way there's a little bit of a gap to create that look for the frigate. But that's how this entire build was done. It was just using a lot of um, the making great use of the better snap points, but that's how I managed to create the nose and snapped it into the main ship was using that weapon attachment glitch down there. If you all need me to break down the ship even more by showing you what part snaps to where, just let me know. But the nose was honestly the part that was getting everyone. Um, the rest of the build seemed, er everyone seemed to be able to kind of understand how the rest of the ship was made. But that nose was the thing that was creating the biggest issue.